Hey y'all, welcome back to the cookie jar. Today we are doing the 25th recipe from the sugar cookie murder. It is the second bread recipe. It is called can bread, which is this page and these two pages here. The thing with this is it doesn't tell you how much it makes. Not like one loaf, two loaves, no. It, it just says you, how many different ways you can make it. It just says divide the dough, shape it into loaves, rounds, rolls, uh, little animals, braids, or whatever. Or it says you can even use greased metal coffee cans for rounds and amaze your friends when you give them round sandwiches. Now, I don't think they make the metal coffee cans anymore. I think they're all plastic now. So, I have um, two loaf pans that I hope will be enough to hold it all. Um, it also says that you can glaze the top with a mix of egg yolk and water. I might try that just to see what happens. So, the thing with bread, of course, is it's going to rise. It's going to rise twice. So, you're already at two to three hours into this recipe. And the bread loaves bake for, it says, 60 minutes for large loaves and 45 for smaller loaves or rounds and rolls 30 minutes. So that's basically another hour at least. So, you're looking at three to four hours for this recipe. That's a long time, so hopefully it's good. Let's get into the little notes in this. So the first one, obviously, do not preheat the oven. Bread us dries for several hours before baking. This bread recipe is from Cheryl Coombs. She says it's almost foolproof, even if for somebody who's never had the nerve to bake bread from scratch before. So it's, I guess it's a good one to really get your teeth into first. It just says, say, to melt the butter in a saucepan with boiling water. Pour it in a bowl, add the salt, brown sugar, and oatmeal, stir it all up. I'm not going to do that. I have a kettle that's going to boil the water, and then I'm just going to melt the butter with the water in a bowl. Sounds easier. And then you're just mixing everything up. It does say that before the first rise, and before you turn it out to knead it, that a moisture level midway between muffin batter and cookie dough is what it should be. And then, of course, you're going to turn it out to knead it for a couple of minutes and it says it doesn't need to rest but you probably do and then the next set is kneading is just punching it down and turning it over and folding it a bunch of times you'll like it it's therapeutic there's no need to knead that's a terrible pun any longer than five minutes just no dough is no longer sticky to your hands or stingy like glue so i mean i like that it's giving you things to compare it to so you kind of know what stage you're looking for so that's kind of nice it does say that when you're um, proofing the dough, put it in a warm, not a hot place until it's uh, doubled in bulk. This will take from one to two hours. My oven has a proof setting on it, so that's what, where I'm going to stick it. Um, it does say, important note, if you don't want to bake your bread today, don't let the dough rise. Cover the bowl with plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator. It can wait up to 12 hours. Then just take it out in the morning, remove the plastic wrap, cover the dough with a damp towel, and set it in a warm place to finish rising. So you can make the dough a little bit ahead of time, but you still can't rise it. So it kind of, to me, defeats the purpose, because what are you saving yourself? Five minutes? Well, I guess the kneading, too. So maybe ten minutes. Okay, it says, once it's doubled, return it to a floured board, punch it down, divide it up, make your whatevers. And then once you have it divided, you're going to cover it again and let it sit for 45 minutes before you preheat the oven to 350. And then, of course, it goes into glazing and baking. It does say to let it cool in pans for uh, 15 minutes and then turn it out. But, yeah. So, it is going to be a long day of waiting, basically, for this can bread. But Honestly, you probably can't get those cans anymore. It probably needs a different name. But we have everything in the kitchen, so let's get in there and get started. So here's what we're going to be using today. We've got half a cup of butter. That's one stick, a quarter of a pound. Two cups of boiling water, a teaspoon of salt, half a cup of brown sugar, 
one cup oatmeal. I used Quaker Oats Quick one minute, two quarter ounce packages of dry yeast, any type, two eggs, and four and a half cups flour, approximate measure. You will be using more to flour the board and to knead and everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the half a stick of butter and the two cups of water, super hot boiling water. Get this melted together. Okay, so once this is melted, we're going to add the salt, the brown sugar, and the oatmeal. I did kind of chop it up a little bit just so that it wouldn't be too bad. Now, my biggest concern right now is that it's not telling you heat temps at all. It's just saying, you know, melt the butter in boiling water and then add half the ingredients and then add the yeast before it cools off. Now, my history with yeast is it's very temperamental to temperatures. And it doesn't tell you which yeast to use either. So I am a little worried that it's either going to be too hot or too cold or uh, it really did matter the type of yeast. And I don't, I hate recipes that aren't specific. All right, so that butter is melted. So we're adding the teaspoon of salt, the half a cup of brown sugar, the cup of oatmeal, Let me get this stirred up. Now I assume we're stirring it to dissolve the brown sugar. So once I don't feel that, I'm gonna add the yeast. And that's two packets of yeast. Now, it does say at this point to crack the eggs in a glass and mix them up and then add them in. I knew that was coming, so I've already done it. It says stir thoroughly, but there's nothing really for it to have purchased to. There's water and butter and salt and yeast and oatmeal. There's nothing really for it to combine with. We've gotten to the flour, the last ingredient, technically. And it does say to add it one cup of it at a time until it feels right for bread dough. And then it, that's when it gives the comparison between muffin and um, cookie. And I will be perfectly honest, I'm not a big bread person making bread because I'm not, I don't like getting my hands particularly messy. So this is not my ideal variation. I feel like most of the bread, if I've ever made it, is in my KitchenAid with a little bread attachment. All right, so we're starting to get to an oatmeal consistency. <laughs> I think we're at the muffin, the equivalent to muffin maybe. The last little bit mixed in. Okay, I'm gonna say we are at the right stage. Now this isn't not sticky, it's very sticky. But it also said that you were supposed to knead it till it wasn't the stage. Oh, this is my version of a nightmare. At least one of them. Uh, it does say now to let it rest for a couple of minutes. So that is what we're gonna do. So it says to mess this around until it's no longer stringy like glue. It says it shouldn't take more than five minutes and to keep adding flour as it's sticky. That would be the approximate in the recipe. Now me, I despise this part so much. It says it shouldn't take more than five minutes until it's no longer stringy like glue. But I kind of feel this is still stringy like glue if I don't keep adding enough flour to keep it moving. 
Now we're gonna take the dough and drop it into a greased bowl. This is what we have so far. Now it wants us to cover it and put it in a warm place for one to two hours until it is doubled in size. So we will see how long that takes. All right, so it has been in the oven for an hour. It's already doubled in size. So it says to plop that out onto a floured board. And it says to punch it down and then divide it into loaves or rolls or whatever you're gonna use it for. I have two greased little tins here. I guess I'm just gonna cut it in half and then put each half in the tins. Um, the one is actually a decorative tin. So what I think I'm going to do is it does mention having a glazed top, which is the egg yolk and the water mixed. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glaze this one and then leave the other one alone. Which, how you're supposed to glaze a top is, that's the top. I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. I don't actually know what I'm looking for here as far as punched down. We're just gonna call that done. Okay, so apparently we still have to cover these again and pop them in the oven. I forgot that part. This is what we have now. Now I'm just gonna cover them back up with the towel and pop them back into the proofer for 45 minutes. So now that they have proofed for 45 minutes, the oven is preheated to 350. Um, for this one, when it gets flipped out, the design's gonna be on the top. So I'm not going to glaze that one. Plus, I feel like only glazing one of them, you can really see what the difference is and if it's worth it to glaze it. I am going to glaze this one though. So this is the egg yolk and a little bit of water. It doesn't say how much water, it just says a little bit. So hopefully I mixed it right. And I'm just gonna, I guess, coat the top. So this is what they end up looking like. And they're gonna go in the oven at 350. It does say for larger loaves or coffee cans, an hour. Smaller loaves or rounds, 45 minutes, and rolls, about 30. So my guess is that because this one is so thick and this one's just so big, that they're gonna take the um, 60 minutes. But it doesn't say what to look for. So I'm assuming they should be golden brown, and if you shove something in them, they shouldn't come out wet. That's the only reference I have to go off of. So hopefully that's what it is. That's what they look like when they come out of the oven. Now I'm just gonna let them sit for, I think it's at 15 minutes before pulling them out. So they're done, they've baked, they've sat for 15 minutes. And then we just gonna pop them out. So, this is what this one looks like. And this is this one. They're still really warm and they smell so good. All right. So, glazing it made it shiny. I don't know if it added anything to the flavor or not, but it is kind of shiny. So, this is what comes out. the end piece. Like I said, it smells really good. I will say, if I hadn't put the oatmeal in it, I would not immediately go, there's oatmeal in that. So I think that's kind of strange. Like I, I feel like you should be able to see it or, or taste it in your mouth or something, but you don't. I don't know where it went. That's kind of strange. But I do, I feel like this would be a good sandwich bread or just a bread to put like butter on. It does <clears throat> give me like a dinner roll kind of vibe. Not a vibe. 
uh, a taste. It, it does. It reminds me of a really good dinner roll. It's okay. It's bread. It's plain bread, but it's not bad. It's got an okay flavor for something that doesn't really have a lot of taste, but it did take a while to make it between two rises and such a long bake time. Is it something I'd make again? Probably not. I'm not a big bread maker person. I just, especially plain bread. Like if it was something fancy or something special, I would have no problem making it. But plain bread like this, I just don't see the point for me because I'm not a big I want to make bread person. But overall, it's good. It's tasty. I can say, hey, guess what? I made homemade bread. Woo. That's about the only flex for this. Um, yeah. So next week, are going to be making the cheesy spicy corn muffins. If you're interested in seeing those, join us next week. I'm not too looking forward to it because I'm not a big spicy person. So this is probably going to be me taking one bite and going, ah, and then diving for the milk probably. That That is my take on that. <laughs> but uh, if you want to see that, join us next week on the cookie jar. Have a good one. Bye guys.